Herzlich willkommen zu einer weiteren Ausgabe, diesmal ein Interview auf Englisch mit dem Ken von Thrasio. Das ist ein US-amerikanischer Konsolidator, das heißt, die kaufen Amazon-basierte Unternehmen in einer ziemlich schnellen Geschwindigkeit auf. Sie haben mittlerweile über 100 Millionen US-Dollar eingesammelt und ähm, das hat natürlich den Vorteil, dass sie ähm, auch in Cash kaufen können. Äh, das freut natürlich den Verkäufer. Ähm, was nicht ganz so schön ist, ist das Multiple. Das ist ein bisschen am, am unteren Ende, was wahrscheinlich auch so daran liegt, dass sie als Konsolidator äh, wirklich nur an dem Amazon-Teil des Business interessiert sind. Also das heißt, die ganzen Faktoren, die sich normalerweise positiv auf das Multiple aufwirken, sind jetzt nicht so relevant für einen Konsolidator. Äh, ist natürlich dann wiederum für jemanden, der nur ein Amazon-Business hat, äh, wirklich ein guter, ein guter Käufer. Ne? Einfach wegen der Geschwindigkeit und äh, natürlich wegen dem hohen Cash-Anteil. Ähm, deswegen, ja, denke ich, ist interessant, äh, auf jeden Fall äh, das Ganze mal aus der, aus der Käuferseite äh, zu, äh, sich anzuhören und ich wünsche dir viel Spaß mit dem Interview. Can you introduce yourself and uh, your company Thrasio, so we have an understanding um, about what you're doing? Absolutely, and thanks for having me on the podcast. So um, just give you a little bit of background about myself. I spent uh, 13 years in investment management as a equities analyst and portfolio manager, um, investing hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, small cap technology growth stocks. Um, after, uh, you know, I, I was looking for a career transition and three years ago, I got teamed up with an entrepreneur in Boston that owned multiple businesses, one of which was actually a $15 million a year Amazon business. So um, I kind of dove into the Amazon ecosystem into the deep end, uh, was COO, ran day-to-day -day operations, learned all the tri trials and tribulations that uh, a business owner and Amazon seller goes through uh, from suspensions to hijack listings, et cetera. I'm sure all of the, the listeners are familiar with those. And then uh, it basically it, in the end of 2018, I got connected with the team at Thrasio and um, basically the vision of Thrasio was to build a highly functional operational platform um, centered around, you know, areas of functional expertise for running an Amazon business. So um, what that basically precipitated was a, a series of acquisitions um, really starting in earnest at kind of December of 2018 um, and it continues through today and we're now a, a company that has roughly 20 brands under management um, and we're acquiring two to three Amazon FBA businesses a month. Uh, we have a team of 50 people uh, roughly that, that are operating uh, the businesses on a daily basis. Okay, so the first question I have in mind is how do you evaluate uh, whether a brand is, is a good fit for you? So maybe you can start by describing the, you know, the, the required criteria and uh, maybe also the things that are really nice to have that would uh, really drive the value. Sure. So our overarching criteria is we're looking for brands that are, you know, strictly private label. Um, we don't we don't acquire any resellers. So they must own their brand, uh, must own their trademark, uh, ideally brand registry 2.0. And then from there, the high level criteria is revenue in the range of one to 15 million a year. So on a trailing 12 months basis. And then uh, we're, we're category agnostic, but we really um, focus on kind of everyday hard goods. So, um, you know, that, that, that can range from You know, what we like to say is our ideal company is the number one spatula company on Amazon. Um, so we like simple, uh, boring uh, products. And the, the, the only really exclusions I would say is we don't, we don't want products that have heavy technology obsolescence risk, uh, a heavy fashion component where you're constantly having to iterate and design new products and release new products um, and be on trend. And also, we, we don't want to buy any fads. You know, we don't want to buy uh, the hottest fidget spinner company at the peak of the market. So those are really, um, outside of that, where we look at a lot of different businesses. I've probably looked at over 200, 300, 200, 250 businesses since I joined 
um, at the end of November last year. Um, so we don't have, um, we're not super selective on the categories. And then, um, okay. there, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I was going to ask, so because you, you're focusing on Amazon um, and, you know, many sellers uh, like to be diversified or some buyers, even they, they, they like to buy something that is diversified. How do you value it if somebody is doing some sales on Amazon, but also, uh, you know, has some other marketplaces or, uh, you know, has some its, its own shop or acquires traffic through other means? Is, is that a plus or is that a minus uh, from, from your point of view? Yeah, I would say... You know, it's probably a neutral for us, to be honest, um, because we, you know, because we are so focused on the Amazon ecosystem and marketplaces, we, we, our, our, our company is set up to operate Amazon specific brands. So the majority of the businesses we acquire, you know, at least 90% of revenue is being driven by Amazon uh, marketplace. So um, we know that, uh, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs want, want to diversify uh, off of Amazon and, you know, kind of get get away from that key channel risk. But we, we view it as, you know, we're diversifying via por a portfolio of brands um, and, and listings in ASIN. So um, for us, it's not a huge, you know, premium on a business if it is off of Amazon. Now, I, I think there's other buyers in the marketplace where they will put a premium if you're, you know, 50% Amazon, 50% direct to consumer via Shopify, WooCommerce uh, site, et cetera. But for us, you know, the more Amazon, the better. Um, so we're, I think, mm -hmm. a, a little bit different uh, in that regard than your traditional buyer. Okay. And, and what about the ability to, to get traffic off outside of, of Amazon? Yeah. Um, because I'm thinking if somebody has a brand, you know, builds a community around the, the brand, but then Amazon, it just happens to be the place where the, the deal takes place. Uh, they buy on Amazon. W would you say that's that's a huge um, uh, advantage or again, would that be something yeah. neutral for you? Yeah, I think that's definitely, definitely an advantage when, when you look at um, the Amazon platform and where it's headed and where we, where we think it's headed over the next couple of years. It's really going to be you know the people who can convert at a high rate are the, are going to be the winners so there's you know mm. a, a couple different ways that you can achieve that but obviously you know one of the big ways is going to be driving traffic off of amazon that has intent for your products and that converts on your listing right so yeah i definitely think that's an asset and that's you know a capability that we're also really building out internally as well um okay so I, yeah and, and, and speaking of um, um, uh, location or um, uh, regions, so, so you're, you're based in the U.S. Um, how, how interesting are the other marketplaces, in particular, of course, the, the German marketplace for you? Yeah, very, very. So, um, you know, when we look at the overall opportunity for us to consolidate Amazon brands, you know, there's you know, a statistic of, there's over 25,000 $1 million sellers on Amazon. We know they're not all in the U.S. Um, so we're, we're, we're structured to operate globally. So we, have, we actually have uh, product listings in every single Amazon marketplace today. Um, we've made uh, three acquisitions in the U.K. of U.K.-based companies. We've bought two businesses from Romania. We've bought two businesses that were domiciled in the Philippines. So we are global in nature and have the capabilities to um, acquire on a, a global scale. We actually did a, an internal proprietary study on the Amazon marketplaces, um, leveraging third-party data as well as our own data. and and research and we think the German market is probably one of the strongest outside of the US so um, you know we're focused on the next three to five years not just the next six you know six to twelve months and that's why you know we think it, it definitely makes sense for us to start building relationships um, particularly in Germany um, and, and kind of the genesis of you know, reaching out to Dragonfly. Okay, and um, 
if if you were to or i don't know you you have not uh, acquired a business in in, in germany and so uh, you know maybe some functions of the business are uh, you you know they they require maybe some german language skills or something that's that's unique to germany would that be you know would, would you be looking for for you know somebody who already has um, let's say a, a team, maybe maybe some some VAs and so on. Or would you say no? That's not so much of interest because you know you have your your own intra, your your own processes and and your own uh, personnel to to run the business when it comes to a German business. Yeah, I would say you know I, I think our first German acquisition would we would probably um, keep on you know native uh, speaking either customer whether it be customer service or um, you know. We, we just don't have that expertise in house today. So I think that would be, you know, our, our first German acquisition would, would probably be somewhat of a linchpin in that market. Um, we know that, you know, uh, when we look into the future that we'll, we'll, we'll probably have uh, global office structure. So right now we're Boston, New York, and Texas, uh, you know, Houston, Dallas, uh, Houston, Austin area. Um, we're exploring you know, where we should, you know, hang our shingle in Europe uh, actively. So, uh, you know, we think Ger Germany and the UK are probably the two most likely places for us outside of, you know, our supply chain teams we're building out and in, in China. Uh, and we, we have we have a large team that we're also building out in the Philippines as well. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, typically for the for US based businesses, you know, we, we, we migrate the owner out uh, quickly. So, you know, we can do due diligence and close the deal in 30 days and then, you know, cash cash buyer at close. And then we migrate the owner out in the subsequent 30 day period. But I think it will be it would be different for our first German acquisition. We would definitely have a serious conversation on, you know, potentially keeping a team a, a team on at least, or at least a portion of it. OK. Okay, that sounds interesting. Um, and speaking of the process, you said it, it takes 30 days. C can you talk a little bit, uh, you know, how, how, it, how it starts from, from the beginning until yeah. um, until the close? Yeah, so I think this is one of our, you know, attractive attributes as a buyer in the marketplace. We, you know, we've structured the business to operate in, 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 and acquire the size of businesses that I referenced before. So, um, you know, we have an entire de uh, deal team in New York that handles all the due diligence that has the capacity to simultaneously do due diligence on three to five companies a month. Um, so the process is pretty simple. Uh, you know, I, I, I talk to all the business owners myself uh, initially, and then, and, you know, the team does a competitive analysis, marketplace assessment, growth assessment of the business. And then it moves to a letter of intent stage. So once we sign a letter of intent, that's just high level deal terms. Um, once that's signed off, that usually takes a few, you know, maybe a few days to get an offer together, uh, a little bit back and forth. Um, and that basically locks us into a, a diligence ex exclusivity period. And, it, and then the, over the subsequent 30 days, it's basically, you know, our team recreates the profit and loss statement and the main objective is really to reconcile the, the the profit that we're acquiring and paying for is you know what the owner says it was so it's you know the, the beauty about amazon is there is a canonical source of data in seller central so outside of the owner's uh you know personal gna load of the business and you know advertising spend and cost of goods sold everything is pretty much it is what it is there's no fudging those numbers um so we we really then work to also reconcile the cost of goods sold uh and inventory as part of the deal but that, okay I mean, that can, yeah. so, so you get access to sell central because that that's the source of truth uh yeah. and uh what you then need is uh the the landed cost uh which which you don't see in seller central but um, if there's nothing fancy, then I agree. It's very, it's very straightforward. Yep. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, that's the beauty of this market is that, you know, it, it, we, we, we have, we, you know, we programmed a script internally where we can build a accrual based uh, monthly profit and loss statement with access to seller central and a cogs master file within an hour. Um, 
So, you know, we often do that for businesses, you know, even if we're not going to acquire them just so the owner has, you know, either a P and L that they can take to a broker or they really know what their true profitability is. Cause a lot of times they're doing, you know, just cash based mm-hmm. accounting, which doesn't match up um, actual costs and show the true profitability of a business. Right. So you could, you could buy a bunch That's of inventory. Always, oh. Yeah. You know, you could buy a bunch of inventory and then you, you're selling it through over the, a subsequent nine month period. Uh, it's just, it's tough to show the true profitability of a business unless you do accrual based P and L. Yep. Okay. And um, can you can you talk a little bit about the the deal structure so that if you do make an offer, how how does that typically look like? Yeah. So all of our offers, are, you know, are, are cash based offers. Um, the majority of our purchases are are what's called an asset purchase uh, versus a you know a share purchase. Um, the only times we do share purchases are if we're buying a UK based entity because of the tax benefits to the seller. Um, you know, there's an economic mm-hmm. relief tax or economic relief tax in the U in the UK, which is 10% versus, you know, 40% uh, gains tax. So, um, so it's an asset purchase and the way we, we typically structure it is we, the majority of the transaction value is paid upfront at time at time of closing. There's often a uh, percentage of that agreed upon purchase price that's held back for a year just for um, warranties, reps and warranties. It's just, you know, it, it might be 5% or 10%. That's just held in escrow for a year. Um, mm-hmm. And then, and then it depends on, on the business and the growth profile and the negotiation process up front. You know, we typically do structure uh, as part of the deal what we call an earn out or earn up um, that allows the owner to participate in future upside of the business underneath our management. Um, you know, I think a lot of times sellers say, well, I could, the business is growing. I don't want to sell it or I think it could double, um, you know, and they're just that that fear of missing out. So we, we work with the sellers to structure something that, you know, they feel comfortable with that might let them participate in future growth of the brand. Okay. Um, and can you, can you say like t- what would be typical uh, multiples on the seller discretionary earning that, yep. that you know, that, that you usually pay? Yeah. So our range has been two to two and a half times trailing 12 months, sellers discretionary earnings of the, like I said, roughly 20 deals we've done. The median has been 2.2 times. Uh, I, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I talked to a lot of sellers and like, oh, that's, that's, that's low. You know, we see businesses listed for three and, uh, and look, there's going to be a certain percentage. I think albeit small that you can get a three, three X multiple or three and a half times. Um, but those are the one, those are the brands that are, you know, 50, 50 Amazon, um, heavy direct to consumer, their customer acquisition cost is really low on uh, direct to consumer. They've built tons of brand equity like you referenced before right those are the ones that get mm, a three, yeah. three multiple and higher i mean the reality is amazon is still you know it, you can wake up tomorrow and your listings could be suspended so not owning the customer um is what you know leads to the multiples in the amazon marketplace um and you know a lot of times too the, you know like uh there, there's a lot of businesses don't actually clear the market once they get listed. So they might get listed and then they actually never find a buyer. So yeah. Or they sell for less. So I mean, yeah. Like or they sell uh, for less or yeah. So I would just caution people to, you know, as you know, the advertised price is not always what uh, people pay. <laughs> just, it's like, our, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, very, very, very clear. I mean, like, like if you, if you have a business that, that has like all these criteria that, um, other people are looking for, then probably somebody else should be buying it. If it's a pure Amazon play, then maybe uh, it's ideal to to be looking at you because you just value the the Amazon part of the business. So that yeah. makes sense to me. Yeah, and um, at okay. the end of the day, you know, we're we're so active that we're you know we're I think at this point a, a sizable piece of the market for Amazon sellers. So you know, in terms of percentage of transactions in the market. Yeah, um, you said you're a cash buyer, so or, or a large portion is, is yeah. cash. So 
how, how do you get the cash? Where, how, how are you yeah, financed? So, yeah, so we're institutionally backed and, you know, we're closing around right now. So it'll bring our total total funding uh, up to roughly 100 million uh, for the company. So we, you know, we have. OK. Yep. We have we have the capital to go out and acquire uh, a lot of businesses. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and also that that means they they need to be fairly large. I mean, I mean, like for for some people it's small, but like for in the Amazon space, um, it's 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 probably a, a larger size deal because if you want to deploy 100 million, um, that it just uh, means that you can't possibly buy like a hundred thousand uh, uh, euro or USD business because that would mean you need to make one deal per day, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, and that's yeah. We so we're structured. I mean. That, I think that's what's really cool about our company is that, you know, we're structured to stay within that, you know, I think the sweet spot is really that one to 10 million in revenue um, and to, to do it at speed and, and velocity. So you think about the, com the complexity on our end, um, you know, we're buying multiple supplier relationships, right? Um, probably uh, a, an additional three PL relationship. We're trying to manage inventory. We're working capital. I mean, there's a lot that goes in, and when we're buying two to three of these businesses a month and pulling them into our overall company, it's just a lot of lot of heavy lifting and SOPs and um, to to get this right. And you know, migration of the ASINs and accounts from Seller Central. It's just uh, it's not easy. You know what we've built. Um, and that's why, you know, we think we can really uh, consolidate, you know, a couple hundred million in revenue over the next couple of years. Mm, okay. Um, what's your long-term plan? So once once you have acquired all those companies, um, will you will you just keep them forever and enjoy uh, the the profits, or is there is there an, another plan to yeah uh, we... to to sell that as a larger package maybe? Yeah, I think it's um, to be determined, to be honest with you. Um, we initially, you know, thought that, hey, we could consolidate, a, a, you know, 100 million in revenue and then, you know, maybe sell it. Uh, but as, as we dug deeper and deeper and built out the team, we realized, A, there's a much larger opportunity here to provide value to the ecosystem as a cash buyer, as someone who knows how to run Amazon businesses. And, and scale them and then uh b you know like i just re referenced this is what we're doing is very is very difficult it's not uh you know i think we've got a very large lead in the market in terms of anybody else trying to build a scalable acquisition platform and by scalable i mean you know taking in two to four businesses a month uh amazon businesses so like i said i think we plan on being this market for definitely the next two to three years. And then I think we'll see where we're at at that point. Um, and it might, it might be piecemealing off. It might be unifying, uh, you know, brands into categories or um, rebranding potentially, et cetera. So th I think there's a lot of options uh, for us down the road, you know, particularly when you look at other channels off of Amazon and taking brands off of Amazon. It's just we're. I think we're still in the first inning, to be honest with you, as a, as a company. So um, mm. to look to the ninth inning, it's a little hard to <laughs> <laughs> figure out where we're going to be. Yeah, I, I'm not sure everybody understands the the, the analogies. So like in yeah, so, yeah, it's, is uh, it, is it... we're in the first quarter uh, and not looking <laughs> to the fourth quarter. Yes, I know. I I was actually just watching the uh, Red Sox Yankees and they were talking about. Uh, in 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 leather playing in London, how baseball is just not, <laughs> not very <laughs> it's popular. True. Not, not very popular. <laughs> yeah, we're early. We're early stages. All right. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right, got that. All right, so then I think I'm I I have I'm, I'm done with my questions. So um, I want to give you the opportunity to to say anything that that um, I didn't ask, but you you wanted to share. And uh, maybe also tell the audience how how, uh, how to get in contact with you if, if they have a, sure. a business that they think uh, would be yeah. interesting to present to you. Yeah, so um, you can you can we actually have a, a form submission at 
www.thras.io, where you can reach out. Those All those submissions go directly to myself. Or anybody, please feel free to reach out to me directly, Ken, K-E-N, at thras, T-H-R-A-S, dot I-O. It's my email. Um, ha I love talking to sellers and learning about uh, new businesses and brands on Amazon. So I'm happy to uh, you know, either hop on the phone or have an email exchange and uh, take a look at your, your business and uh, answer any questions that anybody has about the overall process. Okay, now after you mentioned that you have 100 million USD to deploy, you probably get a lot of emails. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, yeah, so oh, I have one last question I, I forgot to ask. Uh, what does what a thrash EO or IO, what, what, what does that mean? I mean, it's nice with the domain, it has the IO and it's, you know, the, yeah, yeah, the top level domain yeah, complete it's, words, it's, it's but actually, what does that mean? It's actually, it's actually um, a, a common question also internally of how do you pronounce the name <laughs> so the, the um the company is is thrasio uh and it comes from uh greek mythology thrasos is, is which is the uh personified conception of boldness that's very interesting then thank you very much yeah, thank you ich hoffe, diese Episode war für dich hilfreich und konnte dich in deinem Business ein wenig weiterbringen. Was dich aus meiner Sicht in deinem Business auf jeden Fall weiterbringen kann, ist MyTalent. MyTalent ist eine georgische Recruiting-Agentur für deutschsprachige virtuelle Assistenten. Virtuelle Assistenten sind ortsunabhängige Mitarbeiter für wiederholbare Tätigkeiten wie beispielsweise Support oder Recherche oder auch das Kontaktieren von Influencern. Das sind alles Tätigkeiten, die sind arbeitsintensiv und die solltest du als Unternehmer nicht unbedingt selber machen und dafür eignen sich generell virtuelle Assistenten. Im besten Fall sprechen die virtuellen Assistenten natürlich Deutsch und im besten Fall zahlt man, weil sie eben ortsunabhängig sind, eben keine deutschen Gehälter, sondern lokale Gehälter. Und dazu haben wir in Georgien vor Ort eine Recruiting-Agentur gegründet und wir rekrutieren dort lokale deutschsprachige Mitarbeiter. Die lokalen Gehälter, die gehen so ab 2,50 Euro pro Stunde los, kann natürlich auch drüber liegen, je nach Qualifikation. Aber auf jeden Fall profitierst du davon, dass die Lebenshaltungskosten in Georgien einfach sehr viel niedriger sind als in Deutschland und entsprechend sind natürlich auch die Gehaltserwartungen sehr viel niedriger. Wenn das für dich interessant ist und ich denke, Entlastung ist für jeden Unternehmer interessant, dann besuche uns auf mytalent.io und mach dort ein unverbindliches Gespräch aus und wenn du in dem Formular den Gutscheincode PODCAST eingibst, dann bekommst du 50 Euro Rabatt auf unsere erste Rechnung.